Ottoman Scotland is just a fabulous time. The trees and the landscape are just a mixture of these vibrant colours. And that was no exception on my drive today's adventure. But it wasn't these vibrant colours I was after today. It was something a little bit more monochrome. Things were green and vibrant as I parked up at the start of the mountain and I set about getting my gear ready and this gear included for the first time all my winter gear, my ice axe and all my warm really clothes. I was really hoping that I was going to find some of that white stuff. And today's objective is to find some snow. Let's go! <laughs> Oh man, oh it's building a sweat now I tell you, <laughs> a wonderful, wonderful uh, autumn day it is today and as I said at the start of the video my main purpose for this hike is to find some snow and at this time of year Scotland's mountains often get hit by a wee, a wee blast of winter and this year has been no different in fact, a few weeks ago there was a wee sprinkling of snow in the tops and if you'd watched my last video with Thomas Heaton you, you'll have seen we were in the Cairngorms and we were in the white stuff but I wanted to come back out at the start of the week there was a wee bit of snow and I thought, oh, is it going to last until the weekend? and it has, you might be able to make out Ben Glass and Ben Lors behind me I've got a wee white top on them and that's where I was going to be going <laughs> until about half an hour ago I was driving in a long Loch Tay and I could see the tops of these mountains were covered in clouds so I thought I'll go for this one over here which is a wee bit lower but it's still got some snow in it so I'm going to head up here, head to the summit and I'm going to go along the ridge a wee bit so I'm going to Meal Nantermachan and there's a lovely wee feature further along the ridge where it just narrows to this lovely shark fin crest I'm going to head there, that's the most interesting part of it and then see how my options look and, and hope that it's clear up there and this cloud doesn't roll in but so far it's lovely and it's, it's nice Nice to see the, the white cap on top of the mountains. Let's just see if I can get my boots in it later on. Right, let's crack on. Look at that. It's lovely. Well, I've come to a wee high point here. And I start to drop down before heading back up here. This is the, uh, this is the Monroe meal and Tamakin over my shoulder. But over there, you might be able to make out is Mule Garb, and that's where I'm headed for, and that really is the most shapely peak. And I'm going to be in the snow soon, so I'm quite excited. And I've had some great, great trips out in the autumn in the snow. Two stick in my mind the most. One was uh, last year, was after a heavy snow, early snowfall, we headed to the Grey Corries. And the, the weather was just fantastic, there was no wind, it was completely blue skies, it was a perfect day. And I'll put a link to that somewhere, maybe in the description as well. And the other one that I remember was up at Ben Moore and Stabinion. And I think that was just at the start of November. That was four or five years ago. That was a wow, that was another absolute belter of a day. I think we got an inversion as well. Yeah, it's not quite as nice today, but it's still lovely. The wind's starting to pick up here. It's gonna be cold on top. So yeah, I'm gonna get cracked on and get to the top of this Monroe. Woo! Snow's starting to get a bit more crispy now. Well, I'm not far from the summit. It's just over there. I'm probably 20 metres vertically from it. But the wind's picking up and it's a bit cold. So I'm going to put on my goggles because my eyes are streaming. Take these sunglasses off. I don't think I need the ice axe or the crampons. But it's worth noting, I'd always, always suggest, although we're only in autumn, That'll be my ice axe and my crampons, I reckon, in my bag. Nearly, I'd probably say 90% of the time between now and probably April and May next year. I've been caught out too many times 
I missed all need them today, I don't know, but it's always better to have them, albeit you're carrying a wee bit of extra weight. I've got spare gloves, spare hats in here, and also got these, which I'm putting on now. These are brilliant. I actually sometimes wear these in the uh, in the summer as well, so off with the sunglasses. What I'm gonna do is just put my hood up, give it a wee bit of extra warm, and pop the goggles on, and that'll stop my eyes from streaming. I might look a bit silly, but I'm ready for the uh, the ridge now. So right, let's pack this up. Woo. Right, let's go. I wasn't too far from the summit at this point, and everything was now frozen, and the snow had that lovely, crispy, crunchy feel about it. And I saw a wee shortcut up a steepening slope, which had been infilled with some some lovely deeper snow. And I decided to uh, head up there just to make the route a bit more sporting, and uh, it took me almost directly to the summit. As you can probably see, the clouds come in, and it really is, it's super windy, let me just see if I can get over over here, there we go, that's better. You see over there, the meal garbage I was hoping to go to, it's, it's kind of coming and going, it's a bit clogged in, and it is blowing the hooli, it's really windy, and you know, I think I'm going to make a sensible decision here, I don't think I'm going to go over onto that knife edge ridge, I've been on it many times before, I'll, uh, I'll cut to some footage of it so you can see what it's like. But it's just so windy and it's really icy up here. All the uh, rocks have got right wind. I'm looking at this and I can. Uh, it's frozen. If I put that towards the camera, you might see it. All rhymed up and the snow is nice and solid. Uh, I should probably just seen. I came up a wee sporting route there. That's not the usual way to the summit, but I tested the snow out and there wasn't much of a run out below me. So I decided to uh, kick some steps and that was great fun. And that, that, that's giving me my snow fix, I think. That can wait to another day, I've done it loads of times before, so I'm, I'm calling it. I'm doing an about turn, I'm going to get back down to some shelter. I hope you can hear this. <laughs> and then head back down to the car, so I'll report back in a wee bit once I'm out of this, uh, this gale force wind. So I need to concentrate getting off this hill now that the clag's coming as well. It's grey now as well, unfortunately. Anyway, let's go. Ah. Woo. Ah. So it really was blowing a hooli. You, you can probably hear the wind noise in the microphone. And just at the top, on that ridge along from the summit here, and I was struggling to, yeah, to keep my feet. It was, it was blasting me from the side, and I was super keen to drop a bit of altitude and try and get some shelter out of that cold, icy, gale force wind. But what a difference this dropping, just a wee bit of height makes. You can see behind me, that's where I came from, that's the summit of Mealman Termakin up there. And I dropped down, I don't know, maybe 100, 150, maybe 200 metres. And there's hardly any wind, there's, I'm instantly warmer. And I thought I'd just do just a wee piece of camera to, to maybe uh, give you the reasons why I decided to turn around there. And in this case, for me, there was one main reason, and that was the wind. Uh, I think I, I could have gone along there, I could have gone along to that knife edge ridge, but you're at a st sustained height up there, that's why it's called the Termakin Ridge. And that, the force of that wind was, yeah, it, was, it must have been gusting 
45, 50 miles an hour perhaps in certain bits and it was quite localised. So I reckon I could have got along but A it would have taken me more time and B I think I would have had to stop and put my crampons on, take my ice axe out to cross the ridge which would have eaten up more time. Now I've left a bit later today so I, I didn't want to risk getting coming back down uh, with, the, with the weather deteriorating and in the dark. I do have two head torches but I've got all the gear with me. The, the, warmth, the warmth and the coldness and all that is not an issue. Um, but the wind was, and it wasn't forecast to be that windy up there, but I think it was quite localised, as, as I said, the topography of the, the summit, there's a ridge going right up to the summit, and it was just blasting me over and buffeting me about there. And if I'd got to that knife-edged ridge along there, there's no way, nowhere to shelter, and if you get, it's just one, one wrong step and being buffeted the wrong way, especially if you've got crampons on and an ice axe out. So, that's the reason why I decided to call it safety first. The hill's always there another day, and if you've got if you've got a gut feeling that you don't want to do it, just turn around and go back. There's there's no uh, it gives you an excuse to come back. I've been here plenty of times, but anyway, just thought I'd give you a wee short explanation there. So I'm going to head back down now. The last to say goodbye to the snow. I think this will all be gone in about five or six hours. There is a weather system coming in. The jet streams back across Scotland uh, from tonight, so the, I can see the clouds starting to build already. So it's time. That was another another thing in the back of my mind when I uh, decided to to call it but uh, anyway it's been good I found, I've, my objective was to find some snow and I found some snow and it was lovely some of that snow at the top when I went up and I was uh, kicking steps was fantastic just a tiny incy wincy wee, wee taster of winter and hopefully and fingers crossed there's more to come right enough talking time to get walking down and back to the car let's go it was much nicer down at this lower altitude and I was soon heading back down towards the car It'd been another fine adventure and I was glad to see the white stuff. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that there's lots more of it in the months to come.